I'm Marshall Snively with the Lancaster City Alliance. Thank you all for joining us. Um, just a few ground rules before we get started. Um, we have a lot of people on the call, um, so I would ask that um, if you're not speaking to please mute yourself. Um, and um, there will be opportunity for questions uh, at the end, um, but in the meantime, as we go through the presentation, um, if you do have questions, feel free to use the chat box. And saying that um, we can't answer today, we will follow up and get those answers to um, everyone shortly. Um, so, Jeremy, if you want to pull up the presentation, please. Great. So again, thank you everyone. Um, this presentation is brought to you by Lancaster City Alliance um, and the City of Lancaster. Um, and preparing for Phase Yellow and um, opening our restaurants and um, creating a vibrant and safe experience for everyone to uh, enjoy our city. Um, the, for those of you, Jeremy, if you want to go to the next slide. Um, the uh, the, the, uh, we have a lot to talk about today, um, so we want to get um, started um, shortly. Uh, but I wanted to just let you know who's going to be joining us. Um, we'll have opening remarks um, by uh, Mayor Sirachi and Representative Sterla. Um, and then Barry um, Hanwerger, the solicitor, city solicitor, um, will talk about um, the expansion of cafe dining um, ordinance. Um, we'll review that. Um, we'll look at some options by Cindy McCormick, um, the Deputy Director of Public Works. Um, and then we have some representatives from the PLCB um, joining us to um, talk about and give an overview of the one and answer any questions you may have. And then um, there were just some recently announced financial resources that will become available in the next uh, week or two um, that um, by the Chamber of CDC uh, that we will cover as well. Um, so I guess there's a lot to cover. Um, and this is very timely in that yesterday the governor announced that as we move into Code Yellow, uh, restaurants will be allowed to do outdoor dining. And um, and for those of you who haven't seen those details, Jeremy, so, so briefly we want to go through the, the guidance for businesses um, in the restaurant industry as part of Phase Yellow. Hi. Jeremy. So, as you know, um, next Friday, uh, we will be going into Phase Yellow, which means that uh, indoor areas, including bars and restaurants, you cannot, will be close to customers, but you can um, have through traffic um, for outdoor dining if you have patios, <coughs> rooftops, um, and, and other outdoor areas. Um, customers must be served um, while seated, so no sitting. Next page, please. Uh, at least six between parties at tables, um, restaurants should be at 50% capacity or 12 people for, for 1,000 square feet and do not use shared tables. Next one, please. Uh, they're asking that you utilize reservations as much as possible, um, have staff facilitated seating, um, and please don't allow people to seat themselves and no more than 10 people at a table. And um, please use um, disposable menus. Uh, they're, all, they're asking for technology solutions to avoid the paying of cash uh, and credit card, and um, servers should avoid touching items um, on tables while customers are seated. Um, there's a, a link here that we we'll share with everyone if you haven't seen it already that has more detailed information, but um, these are things that will be in effect coming next Friday as we reopen. So thank you. Next. So now okay. Mark, the meeting goals, um, Mayor Sirachi. Yes, thanks, Marshall. So I'm I'm really uh, not the most interesting part of this presentation because you're really going to want to hear uh, from Barry uh, related to the sidewalk cafe ordinance. I just want to let you all know that uh, we are fast tracking this ordinance uh, to allow for more flexibility related to open containers and to facilitate more outdoor seating. And these changes apply not just to the central business district, to downtown, but um, across the city. I'll also just say that um, there are a number of options that are gonna be presented uh, to you uh, by Cindy McCormick as part of this uh, proposal as well. And our aim is really to provide as um, rapid 
assistance uh, as we are able and you are able as individual uh, proprietors to help you expand out of doors and to uh, be able to capture every day that there's nice weather that you are able to do business uh, and do that safely. I also just want to say that um, you know we're not attaching any fees to uh, these licenses. They're basically we're suspending uh, fees that would uh, have typically been charged. Uh, so if you already have a sidewalk sidewalk cafe permit, we thank you for paying for that in the past. And if you don't have one uh, or you need to expand yours, uh, that will be offered um, at no charge at this time. All of these things are being put into place uh, to help you and uh, and to help our city. And I remain very committed uh, and want to be as supportive as we possibly can to reducing as many barriers as we can to help you reopen, reopen safely. And I would also just add that a key component that I'm asking each of you to help me with is messaging around wearing masks when coming downtown. It is going to be very, very important that we communicate that the city is a safe place to come and to be able to uh, grab a drink, to go sit down, to have a takeout meal, to dine in uh, where that is, uh, where that's able. Um, but we all need to be together on the same page as it relates to mask wearing. And uh, I just can't emphasize this enough that I need your help to create an expectation that in the city, uh, you are wearing a mask unless you are eating or drinking uh, or driving in your car or whatnot, because um, uh, confidence, consumer confidence in safety is going to be hugely important. And I know you know that, I just need to underscore it. Okay. Thank you very much. And I'm just going to turn it over to uh, Representative Sterla, who has been incredibly helpful in, um, in, in, uh, in one of the sections that, that we're going to talk about today as it relates to the uh, PLCB and making sure that uh, we can, um, that there's some clarity about what we can and cannot do uh, as restaurant owners. And so I'll just turn it over to Representative Sterla. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, can everybody hear me? Yes. Yep. Okay. I just got back in again. This is this is a, the most frustrating Zoom meeting I've ever been in. But um, so uh, a couple weeks ago, uh, when I was having a discussion with the governor, he uh, gave the hint that if uh, when we got to yellow, that he might be allowing for outdoor dining only, um, and so. I began to work with the city in terms of, and the Alliance in terms of trying to figure out what it was we could possibly do. Um, there are a lot of technical things, which especially those of you that have liquor licenses, I am sure are concerned about because you don't want to put your liquor license in jeopardy. And so um, just a, a couple things. I mean, the, you know, your premises is still your premises. Uh, if the city allows for, Shared premises outside, that will be something that's governed by the city. Um, you're still allowed to do to-go like you have been, and it has nothing to do with any of the stuff that we'll talk about, uh, well, a little bit, I guess. Um, and, um, you know, the, at your establishment... At your establishment, um, if, if there is uh, outdoor dining already, You'll be able to do outdoor dining in that space as long as you meet the distancing requirements. Um, anything that is outside of your business, you'll need an extension of premises for, which if you get a letter from the city saying they've granted you an extension of premises and what those boundaries are, that'll go to the LCB and they will then allow um, that to occur. There's normally a 30-day waiting period on that. They, they can't waive the 30-day waiting period, but what they can do is grant you permission to use it right away while the 30-day waiting period is going on, just because that allows for, you know, anybody that says, oh, it's terrible to have an outdoor restaurant next to me, they can still go complain. Um, 
As was pointed out, the city rules all open container uh, laws, except if somebody gets in a vehicle and then it becomes the state that rules open container laws uh, as it relates to, to road traffic. Um, there, so there are issues related to where your servers can serve, because if you don't have an extension of premises and your server goes outside and takes an order and serves a drink, um, that's illegal. If you do have an extension of premises and they go outside, they can take an order and serve a drink. Um, that you can also just have to go drinks, but then you're going to be responsible for those people if they're sitting on your premises. Um, so, I mean, there's, there's a whole lot of details we can get into as we move forward here. We're still trying to square away some stuff with the Department of Transportation because they say that you need special events permits in order to close roads. We're going to try and see if we can get a special event permit that lasts for six months uh, for the city of Lancaster for any streets that they want to close uh, on state roads. City streets are up to the city to decide. Um, and uh, so there, there are, um, you know, those issues are, are still being worked through with details, but it shouldn't affect what you're what you're told you're allowed to do in the end um the, the one thing um the 50 percent occupancy or um the uh 12 per thousand square feet um does not just apply to your existing indoor space which is what you normally have an occupancy permit for it will now include your extended outdoor space um, and finally, if you're if you want to do an outdoor dining space that is not contiguous to your uh, establishment, then you need to get an off premises permit, which you all know you're allowed to get 50 of a year, 52 of a year, I think, um, for specific times and places. Um, so with that, those are some of the details that we can get into. You can we can refine some of the questions. Um, and, and you can ask uh, people from the Liquor Control uh, Board and the Liquor Control Enforcement, uh, you know, specific issues. They have assured us that um, they're not out to put anybody out of business. I think thus far in this whole 10-week, uh, um, you know, uh, pandemic that we've been going through, there's only been six establishments that were closed. They were given warnings they were cited and then they were finally closed because they refused to uh, go along with the rules. Um, the one thing I will emphasize is that um, as with anything with this yellow opening, um, if things get out of hand, the governor will shut things down again. And so it's really important that we take advantage of the fact that you can reestablish your business, essentially 100% of your business will be able to be reestablished because of the outdoor expanded space and even more. Um, so in theory, if you used to only be able to serve 30 people, you could serve, you know, 130 people now because of the expanded outdoor space, as long as you're controlling that. If you don't control it, though, those things will start to get shut down. So um, that would be the only word of caution that I would put out there. Um, so let's take advantage of the fact that this is a, a time while the sun's shining to reestablish your businesses and and make them profitable um, because if we're still in yellow come the winter months, you're going to be restricted again in terms of the number of tables and people that you're allowed in your establishments. And so I would, I would encourage everybody to take full advantage of this opportunity. Thank you. Great. Thank you, Mike. Well, thank you. Thank you, Mike. Uh, why don't we move into the ordinance? Um, you know, what we wanted to achieve today was um, to get feedback and to spread information uh, to the restaurants, and only outdoor seating will be allowed. And what the city is um, is working on now to uh, achieve that and, and allow you to expand your footprint. So, um, Barry, if I could turn it over to you. Sure. Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, as, you, as you may 
probably and should be aware, the city already has an existing ordinance, which is in Chapter 240 of the Code of the City of Lancaster, governing licensing for sidewalk cafes. So outdoor eating areas that utilize portions of the city sidewalks. Um, and there are rules and regulations built into that existing ordinance. Uh, we have crafted an ordinance that we hope to have approved by council Friday, June 5th, that will allow for temporary um, licenses to be issued for new seating areas or expansion of seating areas in the city sidewalks with, with much uh, less restriction than is in the existing ordinance. The, the, if you can go to the next slide, if someone could uh, there. The primary purposes are to allow um, restaurants with sidewalk cafe licenses from the city to expand their outdoor seating. So if you already have a license and you want to expand it, this is a process you can take. Um, allow restaurants uh, without those licenses to quickly obtain one. Um, we want to allow these areas to be utilized by patrons of restaurants during the county's phasing in process. So as the regulations change from the state, the regulations on use of these sidewalk areas will change. Um, we're going to establish rules and regulations, which Cindy's going to talk about a little later. The fifth part of, of this was mentioned briefly by Marshall earlier, which is the ordinance is going to allow the city to designate public areas uh, for the consumption of food and beverage. So these would be, for lack of a better word, areas the city sets up with tables and chairs that people can obtain food, uh, beverage from anywhere and go sit in. Uh, that aren't tied into any one particular restaurant. Um, if we can move to the next slide. Um, so these are available in all zoning districts, regardless. So it's central business, residential, wherever restaurant is currently, currently located. There will be no fees for these licenses. Um, City will talk a little bit about the application process. Um, and when she gets there, what she's going to talk about is uh, we will have an application available hopefully by tomorrow uh, for any restaurant owner to obtain, start working on. Uh, we would hope that you can submit them as early starting as mon or as early as Monday for us to get them processed so that if the ordinance is adopted on Friday morning at city council meeting, which we scheduled for 830, uh, that we can then issue the licenses on those that we've already received and processed immediately thereafter so that starting that day during the lunch hour, um, they can be utilized. Um, the ordinance does not contradict, change, or in any way um, impede the liquor code and both the current and expected PLCB regulations. So your use of alcohol in those areas will be tied into whatever the PLCB uh, regulations are for your particular license. Um, Consumption of alcoholic beverages in a sidewalk cafe or a public area that the city designates for uh, food and beverage consumption will not be a violation of the city's open container law. The ordinance specifically references and, and details that. Um, and again, we hope to adopt the ordinance and put it into effect on June 5th, uh, which is obviously the date we're all shooting for for moving into yellow here. Um, couple of things about the license is that it's temporary. In other words, it's a six month license uh, from the date uh, issued through December 31st of this year. Um, these are meant to help us get through this summer and fall season um, with as much occupancy as the restaurant owners can have uh, under state guidelines. And um, if we can move to the next slide, please. Um, the rules and regulations are going to basically incorporate uh, the guidelines given by the state for the operation of restaurants. So the number of tables and chairs will be consistent with that. Cindy will talk about how you will designate where those are and how they're marked so that um, uh, compliance can be had. Um, one of the key components of this, which is part of the guidelines, is that only people sitting in the chairs at, at the tables are permitted in any licensed area of the city. So there's not going to be any standing other than your server, servers or people walking to and from uh, the chairs and tables. There should not be any standing. It is quite frankly designed that these should not become um, outdoor party spots for lack of a better word. We don't want, you know, 
the uh, while we all want, love their business, we don't want a hundred twenty-two year old standing in a ten by ten area holding their adult beverage. It is meant to comply with the state guidelines. Um, there will be you will be required to maintain proper health standards, including sanitizing tables, um, dealing with trash. Um, the hours of operation will be dealt with. Um, the hours of operation will be dealt with. Uh, in the rules and regulations. This applies to both holders of both current licenses and temporary licenses. Um, some common questions that might pop up are what happens if a family of 15 comes in? Well, it would just be like if you had indoor seating and you didn't have enough ta a table of 15, you're gonna have to separate them. You can't combine the tables. The tables, once they're set under our license, need to be stayed in the, maintained in those places. Um, and yet you're not supposed to add chairs to existing tables. So the table format will be set up and you'll have to deal with that as part of your reservation and seating process. Um, again, the ordinance is meant to give our uh, as much flexibility as possible. The rules and regulations can and will change as the governor's rules and regulations change and as the PLCB's rules and regulations change. Um, we're hoping to make this as quick and smooth as possible. And the most important thing I can say to you is we're doing our best to be as uh, amenable as possible. There may be some bumps in the road in terms of our processing um, and in terms of how the ordinance operates. And we wanna work cooperatively with all of you uh, to make sure everybody gets the same treatment. Um, and that's all I had on the, the ordinance, Marshall. Great, thank you, Barry. Uh, Cindy. Yeah, so I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the dining options that we are um, allowing with the temporary um, sidewalk uh, cafe permits. Um, if you want to go to the next slide, um, this is just a slide showing some, you know, some of the um, guidance that's been coming out related to using the public space for seating areas. Um, we are going to be allowing, obviously, the extension of, you know, the existing sidewalk cafe permits, which allow dining in that sidewalk area. Um, we are also looking at provide, um, allowing use of adjacent parking lanes, um, and those could be used either with um, parklet structures, as you can see on the left side of the slide there. It's showing more of a, a permanent type structure that could be used. Um, we all, will also consider um, something less permanent, as you can see a little bit further in that picture, there's just sort of some barriers. We would be looking for something, um, some more um, heavy, sturdy uh, type barriers, but, um, and we are looking into what the rentals of those might, might be as well to, to assist um, restaurants. And then we're also even looking, we're looking at, um, you know, allowing street closures. So if you wanna close a street, if you're on a low volume street, you know, that could be an option, but obviously we need to inspect each location um, to determine what is feasible based on, you know, social distancing requirements, maintaining access to the property and maintaining safety for all the users. Um, uh, next slide, please. So just to go through the options, um, we have the sidewalk seating, which is, you know, we are very limited. Um, overall with the sidewalk width. So we wanna make sure that we are maintaining the six feet of clear walking space for um, pedestrians. We need to take into account other things such as, um, if, are you gonna have people waiting outside? Do we need to provide a queuing area for your customers um, on the outside of your business? Um, we need to maintain access to the doors. And then we still need to, you know, the guidance that Barry mentioned that currently exists, we still need to maintain a distance from bus stops, crosswalks, um, fire hydrants. Um, but another option is, can you use your neighbor's frontage? Um, that is allowed um, in the current ordinance and with the, the proposed ordinance. Um, next slide, please. So this is the uh, parklet option I just mentioned. So we are looking, if there is interest, um, from restaurant owners, we could we are looking at sort of a prototype that could be quickly deployed, something similar to the left, but even maybe even larger with larger walls um, that could be quickly deployed if there isn't. So I know that um, Jeremy has a survey 
that we are sort of, um, that he will give a link to at the end of the presentation where we're going to gauge interest in that type of thing. That is something that is a longer term type structure and obviously has a, a higher cost associated with it. Um, the example on the right is something that is um, less costly that we could um, allow with just some kind of um, like water filled uh, plastic barriers that could be used. Um, and then I guess the next slide, Jeremy. The, um, and then the final option is looking at um, intermittent street closures. As, um, as was mentioned, we are going to be allowing street closures. If you are on a, a low volume street yourself and you can, and it makes sense and we can work out the details, we would allow you to close the street during certain time periods to um, have seating. You're on a stretch of a roadway and you have multiple businesses that are interested in the street closure, then we would um, be interested in hearing from uh, coordinated efforts related to that. Um, we, the city would be able to assist with signing and um, barricades to close the streets, but um, right now we're looking at the restaurants to be responsible for providing the tables um, and any kind of um, furnishings that you might use for that. And we would obviously help um, assist with the layout of the, of the spacing as well. Um, and then, as Barry mentioned, we are also looking at looking at some semi-permanent closures on some streets, um, some of our low volume streets that we could use as common dining areas where the city would provide the, the tables and chairs um, and they could, it would be a public uh, seating area for people to um, eat any takeout food or beverages. Um, okay. Uh, if, I, if I may jump in, Cindy, I just uh, want to clarify um, on the street closures, we're amenable to thinking about, and we have closed streets for various events, uh, including the 300 block of North Queen, uh, the 100 block of Queen, uh, and so on. And it's not to say that those streets would not be able to be closed on an intermittent basis. I just want to clarify that. But if there is an interest in doing that, then we need to have um, some assistance from business owners and some clarity about what you want to do, how often you want to do it, uh, and to basically make a proposal to us. And then as it relates to the low volume streets, for more uh, semi-permanent closures. The city is looking at those for both these public dining areas, but then again, we'd also be open uh, if there's interest in, you know, a, a block. So, we, you know, an idea of a block was Arch Street, um, kind of behind Zootropolis, uh, that, that block uh, that could potentially serve as a dining area for a variety of different restaurants that are on that West Orange Street, uh, Water Street uh, area. Again, these are just ideas and we're really looking uh, to join forces with your ideas uh, and to come up with uh, ways that we can um, plan. And obviously not all of this is gonna be able to happen by June the 5th. Uh, but uh, we can be working quickly with you in a coordinated way. Uh, we really want to make that happen. And it will be much more efficient if there are groups of businesses that have plans that they're bringing to us that we can work with uh, rather than us trying to coordinate one-on-one uh, -on -one with, with everybody as it relates to the downtown. And then individual businesses in the neighborhoods, of course, um, we can assist in various ways as well. Okay, thanks, Cindy. Sure, just, yeah, the, just to follow up then with the um, application process, um, as very mentioned, we are working on the application to have that available um, by the end of the day tomorrow. Um, the, the process will be that you can either send the application in, um, you can email it in to us, or um, you call in, schedule an inspection with an inspector to meet you out on the site. 
So as soon as, as early as Monday, we're hoping that if you call in, um, we can have inspectors come out and work out all the details on site and then bring back and they can assist with, um, you know, providing or filling out the paperwork and also providing a sketch of the area. Um, so then they can bring it back to the office. We can um, compile it. And as Barry mentioned, we could be ready to start issuing licenses by Friday. So the idea is that we would, you know, only need basically a day or so after the inspection to actually issue the license. And uh, I see a question in the chat about whether or not the parklet options are um, the more permanent structures are an option on state roads. And at this time, they are. So that's all I had on the uh, dining options. Great, thank you, Cindy. Uh, and everyone, please uh, keep the questions coming through chat um, and uh, we're getting to them um, as best we can. And we still will have a Q&A session, um, assuming there's time um, after this as well. Um, so would like to thank, or I'd like to welcome um, representatives um, from the um, PLCB. Um, do we have, uh, Rodrigo Diaz with us? Or Michael Vigoda? Hi, uh, Marshall. Hi, Mike Vigoda from the LCB. Rod Diaz, our chief counsel, is not able to be here uh, this morning. He's on a very important call, which would pretty much everybody on this Zoom call wants to know, which is how the guidance yesterday from the governor's office impacts extension of premises on a permanent or temporary basis. The board is having that discussion as we speak. So I felt it more uh, more important for him to be there guiding that conversation uh, so we actually can get answers rather than a whole bunch of I don't know. Um, so he's unfortunately unable to join us. Well, Mike, we're happy to have you. So I'll just turn it over to you to uh, give an overview over at, on Act 21, please. Yep. So Act 21, as hopefully you all are aware now, um, allows spirit uh, spirits mixed with something else in a ounce uh, configuration of four to 64 for off-premise consumptions in a sealed container. A sealed container being that of a plastic cup with a lid and something covering the straw hole or say like a growler with a sealed top. Um, it is unprecedented in the Commonwealth uh, for that to happen. It has never been allowed before um, for spirits to be sold in off-premise, for, for off-premise consumption. Uh, to that end, we did put some frequently asked questions sections on our website uh, to try to help guide uh, the questions from licensees across the state. I will say that Act 21, one of the biggest things that we got asked right away was whether it includes wine. It does not. Uh, Act 21 is strictly for spirits. Um, so if you're trying to make a mixed drink with wine in it, uh, you would need to have a wine expanded permit. It does not cover that. Uh, another big uh, issue is whether or not mixed drinks are deliverable, like say by DoorDash or Grubhub, or sorry, yeah, Grubhub. Um, that is, I live in Schuylkill County. I do not have access to those, to those services. So, um, but that is, those mixed drinks are not deliverable either. So it is something for people to come in, purchase from your restaurant, and take out. Um, how it's applicable really for this conversation here is really going to be on the outdoor dining aspect. Whether we're extending your premises or you already have outdoor seating, or you're going to, say, a communal area to enjoy your food and beverages. So it is really... There's a lot of questions and answers that are flexible and situation dependent, uh, and we're very much aware of that. We do offer, and unfortunately Rod is not here, but we are, believe our contact information is going to be provided to you if you do have direct questions that I cannot answer today, um, that we will be happy to get back with you. Um, I did want to mention real quick uh, to Representative Sterla's point earlier, 
uh, us as the liquor control board and also liquor control enforcement under Pennsylvania State Police are not trying to be heavy handed in this. Uh, we are trying to work with the regulated community to help your businesses out at this time, because let me be honest with you, we're all in this together and that's how we view it. Um, you guys as restaurants are our customers and we want you to succeed as much as we succeed. So, uh, with that, I'm, you know, as we go through this, I'm happy to answer your questions. And again, uh, if there's anything we can't answer right now, I will get back to you. Great. Thanks, Mike. Uh, one question that did come up, Mike, was um, what is the turnaround time for um, to issue extension of premises applications? So uh, th that is one of the conversations taking place right now. Um, I can tell you what we're looking at from an agency standpoint and working with the administration is whether or not an extension is going to be temporary or permanent. Um, and how I'll decipher that for you, if you do not currently have a, a patio or deck attached to your building for service and you're going to build one, that's going to be a permanent extension. If you're trying to put some tables and chairs out front in order to um, just accommodate some patrons, that's temporary. Uh, we're going to set up a different, we're attempting to set up different avenues for that. Uh, and that's the conversation going on right now. So we don't have a full view of what it will look like. I can tell you, like Representative Sterla said, we would be looking for an immediate operating authority given to you while you post that orange placard. And God forbid somebody protests, you know, we would have to revoke that authority. But we're hoping you guys can operate right away. A turnaround time would be, at this point, very minimal. We're hoping to do this early next week. So if you have to do some sort of extension, you're able to do that, say, Monday, Tuesday, and have letters from us going for Friday. I will, before, let me extend that as well. One of the things we're discussing is with the administration to whether or not the governor's office wants to declare under the declaration that you guys can do this. You have to come to us with your plans, but you actually don't need our approval for it. This is relatively new. That happened about 10, uh, 10 minutes to 10 this morning. So this is all very, very fluid. Great. Thanks, Mike. All right. Um, so you know, there will be time for additional questions uh, for Mike um, at the end. Um, but I, I did want to cover briefly um, some um, financial <clears throat> um, opportunities uh, for um, businesses that were announced uh, yesterday, actually, um, by the Chamber and um, EDC. Um, and this uh, is for both PP and um, grant funding for uh, that, that could pay for, um, possibly pay for um, some of the things that we're talking about today. So Jeremy, if you could go to the next slide. So the Lancaster County Economic Recovery Plan, again, which is led by EDC and the Chamber, um, yesterday the, the two, these two bullets um, were, are moving forward. It's a $6 million program to provide PPE to businesses um, with 100 or fewer employees, which I think is almost every business on this call. And then and general parameters were released for the first phase of the Small Business Recovery um, Fund that will grant, that will award, award grants um, to businesses. Next slide. So the PPP, <laughs> PPE um, is free. Um, and um, so everyone here um, should be um, eligible. Um, you'll have to register online via, via portal. Um, that will be available um, hopefully in the next week or so. Um, and it's being purchased now and packaged into kits that will likely be mailed to um, businesses. There are over 30 types of kits, um, uh, depending on the size of your business and what industry you're in. And, um, uh, and so look for more information on that coming soon. Next, please. Uh, it will include um, face masks, uh, shields, the, the thermometer that everyone has been searching for, hand sanitizer and cleaning, uh, cleaning wipes. And again, um, right now it's expected that all those kits will be mailed. So look for that portal um, coming soon so you can register. We'll make sure we get that information out to you as soon as it becomes available to us. And then some good news. Uh, the Small Business Recovery and Sustainability Fund. Um, it's a, it, 
the there are three phases of this. The first phase is two million dollars. Oh, I'm sorry, ten million dollars. Um, that for businesses with 20 or fewer employees, um, future phases will be open to businesses with up to 100 employees. Uh, the grants will be based on um, the lesser two figures, a $35,000 maximum or three months of average operating costs, costs um, based on 25% of total business operating expenses. Next. Uh, the application period should be open um, in the next uh, week. Um, and all applications submitted during that period will be evaluated. So it is not a first come first serve. Um, there will be an application process where they will all be vetted um, and uh, um, and um, and awarded um, that way. Um, it is intended to support businesses with working capital needs um, that includes public health requirements and retrofit costs. So the um, which could include uh, extension of dining services to outside. Um, and as I said, the timeline, both programs are expected to roll out in the next two or three weeks. Um, I would say in the meantime, um, please um, visit LancasterChamber.com for updates on that. Uh, and then um, soon there will be a website dedicated um, to this that will have um, far more information. And that's RecoveryLancaster.com. Um, and we'll make sure that information gets out to you um, as well. Okay. Thank you. So, additional questions um, for all of our uh, speakers here today, please. And if you'd like to unmute and ask a question, feel free. I have a question. Um, this is Matt Hostetter speaking from Zotropolis. Um, we have, you know, our two essentially floor to ceiling garage doors um, that lead out onto our, our patio, our outdoor area. Um, I was just wondering if the open air nature um, of our restaurant when we have the two doors all the way open would permit us to have any diners that are technically um, inside on, you know, under our roof, but it's, it's still sort of out, indoor, outdoor. Um, it's kind of hybrid. Um, how would how would the city look at that? Uh, I'll I'll say that the answer to that is really not from a city perspective because it's not a sidewalk cafe because your garage is actually it's part of your indoor facility. the The real question there is going to be with respect to your PLCB license. So there's three parts of that. Is that area already part of your license? Um, that's one. Mm -hmm. Two, does it constitute outdoor dining under the PLCB regs, such as a patio or outdoor area? Um, and then three, if it meets those, then what are the regs for use of it on, under the new guidance that hopefully the board adopts? And I'll, I'll punt to Mike, but I don't think it's a city issue as much as I do it. It's a PLCB issue. No, and to Barry's point, I, it's it's sort of our issue, but again, it, it's I'm going to have to get back to you, Matt, only because the administration is the one that issued the guidance on the outdoor dining. Um, so to your point, how open air is open air? You know, right. you've got two big garage doors. Is that enough? Um, I don't know. Uh, I'm assuming from, and I, I apologize, not been to your restaurant. I'm assuming your patio and what's there is already licensed by us, correct? Yes, correct. Yeah. Okay. Um, if you're able, um, I will get you my co uh, contact information. I will talk to the administration for you and okay. see how they're viewing that because I can't give you the go ahead from our standpoint because you're licensed by us right. and I don't want you to do this and get dinged for it later. Okay. Yeah. So I will check for you. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Mike. So, uh, there's a question. We have a parking lot adjacent to our building. Can we utilize that as seating? And I don't know what restaurant this is, uh, but the, the concept is that, yes, you would be able to utilize that as a seating area. And if you have a liquor license, then you would have to uh, apply for the extension. And then the next question, Barry, I'm going to ask you to answer, uh, which is, is Lancaster considering lifting the open container law? So just to recap what we're doing related to open container. 
Thor, you saved my two thumbs from typing slowly, so thank you. Um, uh, it's in part, in part yes and in part no. So it, it lifts the city's uh, open container laws for consumption of alcohol in sidewalk cafes, so areas that have been approved for a sidewalk cafe license, and in areas that the city has designated for public consumption of food and beverage, public dining halls, for, for lack of a better word, the city will designate and map and show out. In terms of walking up and down all city streets and all city sidewalks with open containers, no, it does not remove those restrictions. Thanks, Barry. Any other questions? We got five minutes, don't be shy. Mayor, if, if I can jump in real quick on uh, the parking lot utilization. Um, I will say there's going to be a difference of how we're going to interpret some things because right now you guys can operate as takeout establishments. If you set up tables in a parking lot and everything you're selling to them is to go, you don't need to extend your premises. You need to extend your premises to cover the parking lot if you're going to have servers out there selling uh, like they would on a normal day. So if your intent is to strictly do takeout in that parking lot, you do not need our approval. You're happy to do that. Uh, your limitations to that would be uh, selling mixed drinks with spirits to go and beer up to 192 fluid ounces to go. Uh, if you have a WEP, a wine expanded permit, you could sell wine as well. Thanks, Mike. Okay, and that is a similar issue to uh, the porta pot or the um, the exchange and being uh, a portion under roof, and then the nano walls being open. So, Mike, we have a couple of restaurants that you can be helpful in providing guidance to about the indoor outdoor uh, component. Um, diners being allowed to go to the bathroom uh, inside restaurants, yes. Uh, there's no preclusion about that. Obviously, cre cleaning protocols are going to need to be in place. We do have existing porta pots that are uh, available in various areas downtown. We're going to be reassessing those um, porta potties as it relates to where we are locating public um, dining uh, facilities. Obviously, we're not going to throw a couple porta potties uh, on the edge of a dining area. Um, but we do want to make sure that those are in, in somewhat close proximity. I can also tell you that the city is not particularly interested in keeping porta potties all over downtown. Uh, we did that for a very specific reason, for a point in time. And so um, we're we're going to see how that goes, but expect um, I, I wouldn't expect any more than our downtown right now. We may just be moving them around. This is Representative Sterla. Can you hear me now? Yes. Yeah. Okay, because I, I don't even have control of whether I can mute or unmute myself. So um, the, the thing that I would say with regard to the open uh, doors, I, I think that, uh, and I don't want to speak for the, the administration, but my guess is that it will be how that space is currently licensed, only because otherwise we get into the issue of, well, I've only got a, uh, 10 foot frontage on my restaurant and I opened the door and the window. So now the whole restaurant's an open air place. N not, no, I mean, they'll be, they'll be making those kinds of exemptions the whole time. And so while I, while I perfectly understand the thought process behind Zotropolis, um, then it, then it becomes a, you know, what percentage of your frontage, what this, what that, and, I think the easier, clear dividing line for people is if it, however, it's currently licensed. Um, the other thing I will say about the question about the parking uh, in an adjacent property, as long as it's contiguous to your property, that's one thing. If you have to walk across somebody else's property that you don't, that that is not part of your extension permit, then it is an off premises. So if you can get your Maybe it's two doors down that there's a, a parking space or a parking lot. And if your person next to you says, go ahead, count my part in front of my store as 
your place also, then it would be contiguous. But if they say, no, don't want you walking back and forth across the front of my property all the time, then it's a non-contiguous uh, location and it has to be an off-premises. There's a question here about selling pints to go. And yes, uh, but they need to be in some kind of sealed container. And Mike, can you talk about what constitutes a sealed container? Uh, yeah, uh, it goes back to beer. So pints, I'm assuming you mean pints of beer. Uh, so the, the law, the liquor code says you can sell a restaurant licensee. And I, pro I don't know, I'm assuming we have some probably manufacturers on this call as well. Restaurant licensees can sell up to 192 fluid ounces of malt or brewed beverage, beer, to go in a single transaction. So if you're selling uh, beer, it in a sealed container literally means a cup with a lid on it and something blocking the straw hole. Because a sealed container is not defined anywhere in the liquor code. Um, so many of you are familiar with slushies at a, dis at a distributor. And you literally put that, that green dot on top of the straw hole, you're in compliance with, with the sealed container. I, I, I'm trying not to be funny about it because it's not, but that's just really what it is. So for, for service to guests or customers that are sitting in outdoor dining, is serving a pint glass without a cover permissible? Are, Sam, are you licensed for that area? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So it, if you are licensed by us in that outdoor area, it is literally licensed. You, you can sell for on-premise consumption. That's how we're viewing it. So a regular cup of, of 12 ounces of beer or whatever configuration is perfectly allowable. Okay. And that would also apply to your extended outdoor area. So yeah. the idea is not that people have to get things to go and take them to your outdoor area that you could actually have a server go out there, take an order, serve a drink out there, and it, it actually allows you that opportunity. I mean, you know as restaurateurs and bar owners that somebody saying, hey, would you like another one of those? Would you like an app? Is much better than waiting for somebody to go get it themselves. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Great. Mike, it's Dean, well, Dean from the Belvedere Inn. I have a question for you. If I have a, a balcony that is currently part of a hotel license, but it's not covered under my liquor uh, area, is that something that we can expand to? Because it's not a sidewalk, but it's part of my building. Yes, it's contiguous to your building, correct? Yeah. Yeah. It's um, just not, it's, it's, part of the, uh, it's part of the hotel license. And it's an area that's not allowed to be served. Okay, are you, Justin? Are you a grandfather? I'm sorry. Are you a grandfathered hotel? Yes. Okay. Um, perhaps, and, and the only reason I'm saying that is, if you're a grandfathered hotel license, uh, you've taken the serving out of that space. Uh, I don't think you can expand it. However, it doesn't mean you couldn't utilize it. You're going to have to use that more as a takeout option rather than in-person dining. It's like a, it's a third floor balcony. Yeah, as long as it's connected to your building, a hotel license is, is slightly different in that you can have a bar downstairs and you can allow people to, to take your, their alcohol through the building. Okay, a, a, a guest of the hotel, I should say. So it's really going to be dependent on your setup. I put my email in the chat here. Um, I'd like to talk to you offline about that because I think it's really going to be dependent on your setup. And on this call, I don't have enough information to give you exact okay. answer. All right, thanks. Yep. Also, one more question. With the outdoor areas, are they going to require them to be barricaded off like uh, each area roped? Are you talking to the city or the LCB on that one? Either one. I think it's a city. So, Cindy, are you still? Yeah, I'm still here. The, I don't know that we're going to require areas to be roped off necessarily. Um, sidewalk cafes, we don't require it right now. Okay. 
this is Mike Sterla. I would suggest, though, that it be demarked so that your servers actually understand where they're allowed to serve and where they're not, um, and that there's no confusion so that it's not like, well, no, that we're, that was not us. We weren't doing that. You know, I mean, just for your you know, who who's in your restaurant and who isn't, because that extended area is going to be considered your restaurant. Okay, right. thanks, Mike. <clears throat> uh, there was a question about, um, can you please go over table placement and seating, how is the six feet determined? Um, I believe that is six feet from the back of, from the back of chairs. So between, if you have two tables um, beside each other, the six feet would have to be between um, the back of the chairs of each table um, seated, if that makes sense. But before people start signing off, um, I do want to say that um, we want to hear what you have to, what, what, um, what you're thinking in terms of the outdoor dining. Um, so there is a survey um, that's in the chat box, and we'll make sure that we get that um, out to everyone as well. Uh, but we'd like to know if, um, what your intentions are, um, if you are interested in extending your outdoor dining and in what way um, so the city um, and we can be uh, prepared for that and get back to you with um, any other questions that you have. So it is now 11.06. So um, unless there are no other questions, um, this, this was recorded, so we'll be able to um, send this out to everyone. And for those who haven't, who weren't able to make it, um, we'll be able to uh, see this as well. Um, but I would really like to um, thank our, our guests from the LCB. Mike, thank you so much. Um, thank you, uh, Mike Sterla, for all of your work um, in getting us this far. Uh, and, and to the city, uh, the mayor who had to sign off, um, Cindy um, Barry, for working so quickly to uh, to pull this together and get this ordinance going. Uh, and to um, our community, um, you, know, you are part of the lifeblood of this uh, uh, of this city and what and what makes us so special. So thank you for sticking through this and um, working with us and, and working with each other uh, to um, get through uh, this crisis. So. Um, we want to be here for you, so please, if you have additional questions, um, get them to us or get them to the city. Um, and um, as we get more information, we'll make sure that we get it out to you uh, promptly. So everyone, thank you so much, and uh, have a great day. <laughs>